At IGAD's Climate and Prediction Center in Nairobi, the solar mini grid is key in supplying power to the organization. On a, a very clear sunny day, uh, the maximum uh, production is around 200 kilowatts per day. Per day, that is between uh, 6.30 in the morning to, to 5 in the evening. The total energy that uh, is generated by these panels is about 200 to 250 kilowatts per day. That's enough to power up to 50 homes in Nairobi. Off-grid solar power spearheaded by startups has gained popularity in Africa in recent years for communities left off mainstream electricity grids. Kenya now leads Africa in stationing of mini grids. These solar panels take up to 15 to 20 years to lose the efficiency due to the reduction of quality of the photovoltaic cells. But they don't work in isolation. They have to be incorporated with the main grid. In remote areas, most of these panels have to go independently and work 100%. But this depends on the environment. Solar mini grids can provide uninterrupted electricity supply and are also an alternative with lower greenhouse gas emissions. Africa remains the least electrified continent. Eight out of ten individuals without access to power worldwide reside on the continent. With, with a market out there of 700 million people that are, on, are not likely to be electrified in the next 20, uh, by 2030, I think there, there's enormous possibility to really accelerate energy access. We're finding governments now all over the continent that understand that relying only on a national utility to get 100% electricity access uh, is not viable, um, doesn't work within the context of you know, the timelines that we're moving towards um, energy access in terms of 2030. In sub-Saharan Africa, the number of solar mini-grid installations has significantly increased from roughly 500 in 2010 to over 3,000 currently. However, the World Bank estimate is that more than 160,000 mini-grids will be required to meet sustainable power goals by 2030. Nick Budimba, CGTN, Nairobi, Kenya.